What's good, math family? In today's video, we're going to look at the two methods to solve systems of linear and quadratic equations, as well as how to determine and interpret the solutions to the system. When we're dealing with systems of equations like this, family, I'm going to tell you, let's start off with the linear equation. Y is equal to X minus 1. So we'll start off by plotting the y-intercept, which is negative 1, and then we'll use the slope of x, which is just 1 over 1, to plot other points on our graph. So after we plot a couple points, we can now connect them by drawing a line through it. So this is what the linear equation should look like once we're done graphing it. Now we could focus our attention over to the parabola. And the first thing we want to do when we focus on the quadratic equation is plot the vertex. So we could find the x coordinate of the vertex by doing the opposite of b divided by 2 times a. So once we substitute, that's going to be the opposite of negative 3 divided by 2 times a. We know a is 1. So the x coordinate for the vertex is positive 3 over 2. Now to find a y value of the vertex, we're just going to plug in the x value and simplify. So we have 3 over 2 squared minus 3 times x. We know x is 3 over 2 minus 6. So y is equal to 9 over 4 minus 9 over 2 minus 6. We can't combine these fractions because they don't have the same denominator, so we'll come up with equivalent expressions, or fractions, I should say. So 9 over 2 turns into 18 over 4, and negative 6, when we convert it into a fraction with a similar denominator, will be 24 over 4. We simplify by subtracting to get negative 33 over 4. So our vertex for the parabola is going to be at positive 3 over 2, negative 33 over 4. So when we go over to our coordinate plane and we plot that, the vertex is going to be right here at 1 and a half and by negative 8 and 1 fourths, which would be about right here. Now, what we could do is we could find other points for the parabola. So let's erase first. So the first point that I'm going to say that we should get is when x is equal to 0. When x is equal to 0 and we substitute that into the quadratic equation, we are going to get a y value of 6, negative 6 that is. So the next order pair we could plot is 0, negative 6. So we plot that on the coordinate plane and remember family, to, to cut down on the amount of work you have to do, remember that the vertex or aka the axis of symmetry, the x value, cuts this parabola in half. So there's another x that has the same y coordinate of negative 6. How could we find what the x value is? Well, think about it. From the vertex to this point here, we went over 1.5 on the x-axis. So if I go over 1.5 to the right of the x-axis, that means x is going to be equal to 3. And if that point matches the first one we plotted, that means the y values are going to be the same. So my next point would be positive 3, negative 6. What you could also do is plug in 3 into the quadratic equation and simplify. Now we're going to go over to the next point when x is equal to negative 1. So when we substitute, this is what we're going to have. y is equal to 1 plus 3 minus 6. So we know y is going to be equal to 4 minus 6, which is negative 2. So the next ordered pair that we could plot would be negative 1, negative 2. And when we look at our graph, we notice that this point also is a point for the linear function. So this is possibly one of our solutions and points of intersections. Now, when you think about it, math family, for us to get from x is 1 and 1 half to x is negative 1 for the x, we had to move 2 and a half spaces to the left. 
Now, if we move two and a half spaces to the right to find an equivalent point, we're going to be at when x is equal to 4. So when x is 4, it's going to have the same y value as when x is equal to negative 1, which means the y value is negative 2. Then we could go back and repeat the process for when x is equal to negative 2. What is the y value? So we're going to substitute. We have negative 2 squared minus 3 by negative 2 minus 6. So y is equal to 4 plus 6, which is 10. 10 minus 6 is going to give us a 4. So this next order pair is going to be negative 2, positive 4. Now, when we look at the x value, right, to get to negative 2 as an x, that means from our vertex, we moved over 3 and a half spaces to the left. If we move over 3 and a half spaces to the right, that means my x value is going to be 5. So when the x value is 5, that means it's going to also have the same y value. So let's, let's plot that. So we had negative 2, positive 4 is the first point. And then the point that matches it on the opposite side of the axis of symmetry will be 5, 4, which will be right here. So we could get more points, but because we see that there's two intersections, we could just connect these points for the parabola. So when they ask us to state the coordinates of all solutions, they're talking about where the parabola and the linear equation crosses each other. So when we look at it like that, that means that the solutions are going to be at negative 1, negative 2. That's the first solution. And then the second solution is going to be at 5, 4. So this is the answer that we're looking for, and this is how you would solve it if we were graphing. Now, before we go, I want to show you guys how to solve this same problem if we did not have a graph. We had to solve it algebraically. So let's erase first. So if they gave you, gave you this problem and we wanted to solve it algebraically, look at the systems. They both have solve the equation or isolated y. So we can use substitution. So if I set these equations equal to each other, I could solve. So x squared minus 3x minus 6 is equal to x minus 1. So we'll subtract x. We'll get x squared minus 4x minus 6 is equal to negative 1. We add 1 on both sides. Now we have x squared minus 4x minus 5 is equal to 0. So once we combine the two equations, family, what we want to do now is this factor to figure out what are the solutions, basically the x's. So once we factor this, this is going to turn into x minus 5 times x plus 1 is equal to 0. And when we set both factors equal to 0, we're going to get x is equal to positive 5. And then we're going to get x is equal to negative 1. Now, if you look at the x values we have, here goes negative 1. Here goes positive 5. Now you're going to say to me, Peters, where did they get the negative 2 and the 4? I'm so happy you guys asked. So let's erase this right here in blue, and I'm going to show you how. And remember, Plug it into the easier equation. So we go over to the linear equation. Y is equal to x minus 1. So y is equal to negative 1 minus 1. Y is equal to negative 2. So when x is negative 1, y is negative 2. There goes our first solution, aka point of intersection. When we repeat this again, when x is 5, y is equal to 5 minus 1 y is equal to 4. So when x is 5, the y is 4. So when you have systems of linear and quadratic equations, family, you could solve it algebraically like we just did on my screen for the second method, 
Or you could do the first method where we're graphing. And just remember that you, the solutions are where the parabola and the linear equation cross each other and intersect. Really hope that this video on systems of linear and quadratic equations was helpful for you, math family. If it was, please don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave comments down below if you had questions on this video or if there's topics we need to add on our channel in the future. Thank you guys so much for continuing to watch and support Algebra 1 with Mr. Peters.